بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Hello and welcome to Dr. Azhar Obstetric Gyne Lecture Series Well, I think it is unfortunate that we continue our communication via internet but it is the best way in our current uh, situation In this lecture, I do incorporate some slide pictures and related material to make this subject more easy to enhance and facilitate your learning ability and understanding of the material presented also try to make it as short as possible to catch your attention using our individual knowledge and experience in preparing this lecture and choosing this material according to their importance that's why I do encourage you to study this lecture hardly and understand its content so that we can improve our patients health care okay let's go back to our lecture gestational trophoblastic tumor Gestational trophoblastic tumor arise from the cells of conception and form a range of related conditions from the generally benign partial hydatiform mole through to the aggressive malignancies of choriocarcinoma and the placental cytotrophoblastic tumors. The combination of this unique biology, relative rarity, and effective therapies make trophoblastic tumor an extremely interesting and important area of both gynecological and oncological care. Despite the rarity of these illnesses, patients with molar pregnancy requiring additional treatment after evacuation can expect successful treatment outcomes with overall um, cure rate for gestational trophoblastic tumor approaching 100%. Well, I think there is a suspicion of increasing incidence of gestational trophoblastic tumor in our society, that's to say, in our country, because of early teenage marriage. So gestational trophoblastic tumors a term, is a term used for a group of pregnancy-related tumors. The cells that form these tumors call trophoblasts, and they come from tissue that grows to form placenta during pregnancy. The pathological classification of gestational trophoblastic tumors is of two types, pre-malignant and malignant. The pre-malignant uh, consists of hydatiform mole, which is of two types, complete mole and partial mole, and this is the subject of our lecture today. The malignant one, which is the subject of uh, our next lecture, consists of uh, three main types, invasive mole, choriocarcinoma, and the placental cytotrophoblastic tumor. So our lecture, which is hydatiform vesicular mole, has um, uh, several uh, learning objectives, and all of them are must to know. What is the definition of hydatiform mole? It's a benign neoplasm of the chorionic villi. Chorionic villi, as you know, they are tiny finger-like projections from placenta. Its genetic material is similar to that of the uh, fetal cells, genetic material that found in the fetal cells. It's a unique tumor that developed from the abnormality at fertilization, so it's entirely fetal in origin. Uh, this type of pregnancy increased to 20-fold in a very young age group, that's to say 16, 15 years and younger, and 10-fold increase in elderly age group, which is uh, 40 years and older. The uterus is distended with thin-walled, translucent, grape-like vesicles from different sizes, and this comes from degenerated chorionic villi that's filled with uh, fluid. There will be no vasculature uh, in it. That's why there will be early death and absorption of the fetus. Uh, there will be trophoblastic proliferation because of increment in their mitotic activity, and this will affect both the syncytial and syncytial trophoblasts, which are the precursor cells of uh, placenta. There will be increase in secretion, beta HCG, chorionic thyrotrobin, and the progesterone. On the other hand, there will be decrease in estrogen production. Because of high beta HCG, there will be stimulation to the ovaries and multiple uh, cystic formation that will call fecal uterine cyst in 50% of cases and because of high pregnancy 
uh, hormone, the really exaggeration in signs and symptoms of pregnancy. So we have uh, uh, two types of uh, mole pregnancy. The complete mole that will uh, fill the whole uterine cavity with vesicles, complete, without embryo. And this one, the partial mole, which is partially uh, of uh, consists of vesicles, and the other part will be a meniotic case sac with or without fetus. In complete mole, the whole conceptus transforms to mass of vesicles, as we said, and there is no embryo. Uh, and uh, this uh, conceptus results from fertilization of unnucleated ovum, empty ovum, without DNA, without the chromosomes, with a sperm which duplicate inside the ovum to produce a, a conceptus of uh, 46 um, chromosomes, but it is paternal from paternal origin only, come from, from the father only. Uh, because of empty ovum. Uh, sometimes two sperm hit uh, this uh, empty ovum, but the end result is the same four, six um, chromosomes, uh, and the type of them depend on the type of chromosomes that hit this empty ovum. In partial mole, part of trophoblast uh, tissue show molar changes, and uh, the other will be uh, fetus or sometimes only amniotic sac uh, without fetus. Uh, so either um, uh, fertilization, the fertilization of this ovum by uh, one uh, sperm that will duplicate inside the ovum, or two sperms uh, uh, that hit uh, the, this ovum, which contain uh, already uh, 23 uh, X uh, chromosomes. So the end result will, will be uh, always uh, 69 uh, chromosomes, which is abnormal. Uh, here's schedule uh, showing you the uh, comparison between the complete mole and partial mole. And you see here the malignant changes in complete mole, which is more common than partial mole, uh, is um, uh, much more than the partial mole. Here, uh, the malignant changes uh, reach sometimes up to 15%, while in partial mole, it's very rare, uh, is only 1% to 2%. What are the clinical symptoms of uh, H mole, amenorrhea because the patient is pregnant, exaggerated symptoms of pregnancy because of high progesterone, high beta HCG, uh, vaginal bleeding of different uh, colors, but uh, usually dark in color, associated sometimes in advanced cases of vesicles, abdominal pain, also uh, different types depending on them, what happened with this uh, molar pregnancy, sometimes acute, sudden, severe uh, in case of perforating mole. The clinical signs, uh, preeclampsia uh, develop in 20% of cases, uh, and uh, this uh, will be very early, that's to say before 20-week uh, gestation. Hyperthyroidism, which uh, all uh, symptoms in 10% of cases because of uh, biological similarity between uh, beta SCG and uh, TSH, breast symptoms. And the size of the uterus, you will see it's extremely larger so, uh, for example, the patient, um, the patient um, often they come in first trimester, but you see that the fundal height will correspond to second trimester. Uh, the uterus feels duffy. There will be no fetal heart, no fetal uh, uh, part. Uh, if you uh, do ultrasound, you will see in 50% of cases uh, what's called fecal uterine cyst. Diagnosis uh, of this pregnancy is by uh, the ideal uh, marker, which is beta SCG. Uh, it will be highly elevated, up to 100,000 uh, international units per liter. The production of this uh, uh, beta SCG is from cells of placenta. It will uh, reach its uh, maximum um, uh, level uh, uh, around 19 weeks of uh, gestation, and then it will fall. But in molar pregnancy, it will continue to rise beyond 12 weeks of gestation. That's why it will be very high. Uh, when you do ultrasound examination, you will see the characteristic appearance of a snowstorm appearance in uh, complete uh, mole. In partial mole, you will see uh, partially uh, this uh, storm with a uh, fetus on the side uh, of the uh, vesicles. Here you see if the patient has cystic formation in the ovaries, you see a large uh, ovaries with a fecal uterine cyst. How can you treat such a patient? The aim of a treatment is to remove the trophoblast tissue from the uterus and eliminate it from other parts of the body. 
the, dr the treatment of choice is the suction curettage, especially when the patient desires fertility and she is young, still young, and want to be pregnant again in the future. So the treatment of choice is suction curettage. Uh, medical treatment is con contraindicated in molar pregnancy. Before the operation of suction curettage, you will uh, uh, prepare cross matched blood do uh, all these uh, uh, investigations, chest x-ray, complete um, uh, blood count, liver function, renal function test, electrolytes, and thyroid fun function test. You will prepare 20 units oxytocin, that is a um, concentrated oxytocin uh, in infusion during and after the operation to enhance uterine contractility and prevent bleeding. The other choice for treatment is hysterectomy. This is especially when the patient is um, uh, old and uh, she don't want to be pregnant again. She and her family and she prefer um, surgical uh, sterilization. That's to say tubal ligation. So you can do hysterectomy with the mole in situ. Ovaries may be preserved even in the presence of uh, prominent fecal uterine cysts because uh, the female need her uh, hormones. But hysterectomy doesn't prevent met uh, metastasis. That's why the follow up will be continue the same even if you do hysterectomy with, uh, uh, with the follow-up uh, and assessment of uh, beta HCG levels. Uh, what are the complications of uh, treatment? Uh, there are several complications. You must um, mention them uh, to the patient um, actually when you do counseling with her before the operation. So you mentioned to her that there uh, will be uh, possibility of intraoperative uh, bleeding, and if this bleeding uh, will be out of control, there will be possibility of hysterectomy. There will be possibility of perforation of uterus, uh, persistent trophoblastic tissue, uh, complication with pulmonary edema because of high output cardiac uh, uh, failure uh, from many uh, causes, uh, preeclampsia, hyperthyroidism, anemia, overload of uh, uh, resuscitation of a fluid. Uh, could be uh, embolus formation, trophoblast embolus, and uh, uh, complication with DIC and uh, acute respiratory distress syndrome. Possibility of choriocarcinoma in 5% of cases, uh, invasive mole in 10% of cases, and recurrence of a mole in up to 2% of cases. Uh, that's to say, next pregnancy. So, how can you follow uh, up, uh, such a patient? Uh, it's by estimation of beta SCG. Uh, which will subside, reaching normal uh, after eight to 12 weeks um, after evacuation. So we will do uh, uh, this estimation every week in the first um, uh, three weeks, and then every month in one year, and then every three months uh, in another year. That's to say totally two years um, follow up. Uh, pregnancy is allowed if the uh, test become negative in, uh, in the first year, uh, that's to say after one year. If uh, the beta, beta SCG persists high or it come down and then uh, go up again, there will be no possibilities or no uh, two differential uh, uh, diagnosis. Choriocarcinoma uh, or uh, uh, presence of uh, new pregnancy. Uh, because um, beta SCG must be undetectable in the first uh, four months after evacuation. If the beta SCG normalized within eight weeks after evacuation, so you can limit your follow up to six months, otherwise, two years follow up. What type of contraception you can uh, use uh, during uh, this uh, follow up? The best one is combined pills, combined contraceptive pills. When the beta SCG uh, becomes negative, and till this time, you can use uh, condom. Uh, the patient can use condom. Uh, the pills uh, must be used when the beta SCG becomes negative because if it's used early, the beta SCG will take longer time to become negative because estrogen in the pills will stimulate the growth of a trophoblast. What about the use of IUD? The device. Uh, cannot be used uh, uh, during this period. Why? Because uh, it may cause irregular uterine bleeding and this will confuse our follow-up. 
And then uh, IUCD in this uh, with molar pregnancy or after uh, evacuation of molar pregnancy can be traumatic and there will be a risk for perforation because the, the uterus is um, uh, fragile after this type of uh, uh, pregnancy. So it is contraindicated. With this slide, I end my lecture. Well, at the end of this lecture, I wish you a good luck in your examination. This slide shows no storm in Sweden, which is a characteristic uh, ultrasound feature of our subject. That's to say, Edgemold. Thank you for your attention. Goodbye.